Okay. So So I thought I would um in this video discuss something which could be considered more um more relative, more objective. Uh, more to do with um, emotions, more to do with behaviour. <clears throat> and that is, I, I noticed that, so that this channel um, is driven to a large extent by the communication between me and um, those who are subscribed, those who also post comments in the videos and also those who I, I talk to directly out with this channel. <coughs> um, it's very much um, driven, the, the direction, let's say, the content is driven by my interactions with these people. Um, and about 50 of the people who subscribe to this channel, I don't know who they are. Um, yeah, something like that, 50 who I've never had direct dialogue with. And um, because the, the, the direction is shaped by the interactions I have with these, with these people, um, it's kind of come about organically. But uh, I haven't spent as much time addressing um, the comments that could maybe be perceived as negative or critical. Um, and there might be a little bit of an imbalance here. Um, and that's mainly just because I'm... Uh, th there's no, there's less resistance to responding to um, the direct questions, uh, asking about a topic or um, giving me ex experience, um, descriptions of experience and I can lead off the back of that and talk about it. But I've maybe not directly addressed um, in detail comments which may be um, or may have been motivated by a, um, a negative reaction to the content in these videos. Um, and I don't believe there's such thing, or I don't see such thing as a, a negative comment. Um, all I see is an authentic expression of a person's um, experience. Or a person's level, felt level of understanding um, of a person's emotions and the seeming connected um, thoughts and words. Um, to me, that's authentic. To me, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I don't feel at all. Uh, triggered by or attacked by negative or critical comments um, and it's not just on this channel on multiple public forums um, I've had discussions I've had made posts with discussions and there have been comments and uh, responses um, seemingly motivated by um, an interpretation which this uh, specific person feels is is negative or um, is uh, defensive about it for whatever reason. Um, it, it doesn't bother me at all. In fact, um, I, I would never have had the courage to 
in a million years had the courage to pre-awakening um, post videos like this into a public space um, talking about what I talk about um, in an authentic way, in an open and vulnerable way. Never in a million years would I have had the, the, the confidence or courage to do something like this. Which is uh, still something I find weird that I'm even doing this uh, in the first place. And I'm fully aware that in doing this I, I'm putting myself out um, in a position where inevitably other people are going to uh, ridicule and criticise um, me as a character <laughs> um, or what this character seems to be talking about. Um, I'm, I'm fully aware of that and I'm completely okay with that. Um, Pre-awakening, I it would have been a completely different case to the extent that I wouldn't have done this whatsoever, no, no chance. And if I did, um, and there was any sort of uh, like critical response, it would have affected my emotions, it would have uh, triggered me, it would have maybe wouldn't have handled it well at all. Um, because at that point in time, I, I believe, uh, when you lay it out, it, it's, it is fucking ridiculous that, um, I believe that, <clears throat> Someone I don't know, what they say, um, refers to something real here, some some real entity here, is be, it feels attacked by the words or interpretation of someone I don't know, someone that doesn't know me. <laughs> if that makes sense, even on the relative level, it is completely ridiculous that um, that interpretation exists anyway. But I'll give I'll give some history on the on the this channel and how it came about. So basically, after after this initial recognition, um, I I wrote journals and I I talked to, uh, to people that I knew um, who had went through this awakening process, let's say, um, and I had been talking to friends and family about it. It was easier for me to take a video journaling and, and talking to the camera and then share it with um, someone who I considered at the time to be uh, a mentor or a teacher. Um, <clears throat> Uh, someone who I considered to be uh, a realised being, let's say, um, and to share with friends and family easier to voice note or to take videos. Uh, eventually I started talking to people online. Um, and in talking to people online, simultaneously as this recognition unfolded, other people were waking up as well. Um, and I'm still in contact with, with, with some of these people who are subscribers to this channel, but simultaneously this coming together of seemingly separate entities, separate individuals, uh, and then the, the merging of those separate individuals into this recognition is a beautiful thing. And eventually I started posting videos onto this channel, uh, unlisted private videos. Um, as a form of correspondence and journaling to share with these people, um, to share with you, you know who you are. So, at some point I enlisted them, um, for whatever reason, so that they are now searchable, people can find them, uh, and then people have started subscribing to this channel. So I'm not doing this channel to, uh, get a message across about the way things are. I'm not doing this channel to communicate a point um, specifically. Um, uh, I'm not doing this channel to 
um, push a philosophy or a doctrine or anything like that. Uh, I'm not doing this channel to communicate anything about this relative character here, other than that character's perception of the the journey as it unfolds in an, in an authentic way for whoever's interested. Um, I, I don't know why I'm doing the channel, um, but it all came about from my interactions with these people. And since I've started this channel, uh, some of the people who have subscribed and watched these videos are waking up as well. <laughs> so, and uh, the ones that are, um, I have a, a positive relationship with them, um, out with this channel, um, and have had many lengthy discussions. Um, I'm not saying that it's anything to do with this character here, because it's not. It's just what's happening. Um, but maybe the reason I don't respond uh, with as much um, detail to negative comments is I can I can just tell that um, I, I seem so far I seem to be able to tell if um, I mean, there's so much context that you don't get from a comment or a message, um, but sometimes I can I can tell when. Um, it's worth a response or not. I mean, some there are some people who aren't here because they want to wake up. Um, they aren't here because of that pull towards this that I describe, and I seem to be able to sense that. Um, um, <clears throat> and I don't know, even know how people find these videos that aren't uh, that I haven't been talking to or on a different uh, platform. I don't, I don't know. And I'm sure that when some people randomly click on this video, if it pops up as a suggested video, uh, and then hear some of the things I'm talking about, of course they're going to be like, "What the fuck are you talk? What is this weirdo going on about?" Because. Certainly, there was a time um, pre-awakening when, when I would have thought the exact same thing. But I'm not here to suggest that anyone's perception, anyone's interpretation, is is wrong. Um, unless you're asking me, but I'm not here to suggest that anyone should be a way other than w the way they are. Because where is the the love in that? Um, all I can point to is my own experience because I, I've I've been through relative stages of emotional development uh, and emotional maturity. Um, I, I, I've I've let's say done a lot pre waking awakening even done a lot of of um, relatively a lot of work on myself in terms of thoughts and behaviours um, before that starts to become spontaneous there is an effort involved in that and there is a, a journey involved in that um, and I have a, a lot of experience with that but I can only point to and, and, and uh, share what my own experience is w with um, thought patterns and behaviours which I can recognise in other people um, for those who are interested or those who are willing to, to hear it um, it might be valuable if not then so be it but I like to ask myself when I'm compelled to act when I'm compelled to communicate um, in whatever form to ask myself what is the motivation for this what are the emotions behind this what motivates this action where does this action come from what is the energy behind it um, when I previously when I felt motivated to uh, triggered by something that's let's say in whatever way and that might be subtle it might be hard to pick up that that emotion that's driving something but when I felt triggered by something it, it, it would 
it would almost always be based on some sort of fear. Um, some sort of threat to this, this entity, this me, that I thought I was. A threat to the self, a threat to the individual. Um, that I was going to lose something. Um, so I had to act, I had to take action to prevent that from happening or to control f for that. And in my case, nine times out of ten, that action, motivated by that function there, it made things worse. <laughs> um, so, um, all because the, the motivation for that came from... Um, fear, it came from, um, it didn't come from love, it didn't come from compassion, it didn't come from understanding, um, it was an automatic fear response. So for example, if someone watches these videos and listens to what I say and feels some compulsion to um, um, criticize this character or, or say something critical of of this character I'm 100% open to criticism I'm 100% open to um, other people pointing out the flaws in this character's behavior um, but um, I would just ask where does that motivation come from um, what is it about me that feels the need to criticize? That, that feels the need to point out flaws? Um, that feels the need to be reactive or defensive? Um, that feels the need to get a point across? Like you have to hear my point. Um, what is it? in me that motivates me to do that. Where is that coming from? It's very easy. Oh, I found it very easy to, to criticize. It was almost a, a default um, thing, pointing out flaws in everything. <laughs> and that, that was just my go-to and I found it very easy to do that. But what I didn't realise for a long time is the is the uh, discontentment and the the discontentment that that was generating and the fear that it, that it was motivated by. What was much harder um, pre awakening? What was much harder was courage. Was being courageous enough to be open, to be vulnerable, and to act from a place of love and compassion. That's not easy. Um, that's the courageous path. That's a courageous thing to do, simply because it's not easy. <laughs> um, mm. And a big part of that work led into this recognition. A big part of the attention to this cleared the way for this this recognition. Um, because I was always defensive, I was always reactive. It was automatic. It was based on this, this suffering, this feeling of discontentment, this feeling of not being good enough, this, fe this fear of being criticised, this fear of other people in the world taking something away from me, taking my um, security away from me, my social uh, and emotional security. But in doing that, I didn't realise I had invested my social and emotional security um, in the conditions of the objective world. So the, the, the changing conditions of the objective world and the, the behaviours of people had a massive effect on my emotions. In fact, my emotional state seemed to depend on that, how someone treats me, how someone acts. Um, someone said the wrong thing to me, 
it, it would hit me here. It would emotionally, it would hit me. Um, I would feel it. It would pull me apart inside. Um, I was at the mercy of the behavior, the opinions, the thoughts, and the words of other people. Completely at the mercy of that. It, emotionally, <clears throat> very vulnerable. Emotionally, very unsafe. Because my contentment, my happiness depended on other people, not myself, other people. It was conditional, it was entirely conditional. So the conditions changed, my happiness changed, uh, my peace was obscured when the conditions changed. When the conditions were right, for a period of time, I might be happy for a bit, and then all of a sudden something would happen. Uh, I, something for me to worry about came and took my peace away and then <laughs> I have no peace for a while and this roller coaster continued um, awakening is a path towards emotional invulnerability emotional invincibility, um, steadiness, contentment, peace, neutrality, solid, no matter what the conditions of the, um, of the experience, solid, steady, unshakable. The path to that let's say, relatively, the path to that is um, there, there are parts of this recognition where you are forced to confront, let's say, like figuratively speaking, you're forced to confront all of that, all of that function, all of where does that come from, these emotions that I've been pushing down by pointing the finger, um, the fear that I've been suppressing, that I might, it might not even be overt in my experience, but is always there, and I'm always covering it up with um, this play in the objective world, all of that will come up, and all of that you have to confront face on, um, and it's certainly not pleasant, um, essentially you're facing all of your your fears but in the moment all of the fears all of that energetic accumulation that has built up over a lifetime all at once at times you have to confront that in the moment um, you're confronting death itself um, and you're let's say making peace with that. When you've been through that, um, nothing will shake you anymore, nothing will rattle you anymore. Um, in contrast, any uh, anything people can do to you, um, any, any way people can mistreat you or criticize you or um, attack you is not, is not going to shake you at all. Um, I still do get triggered. There are there are circumstances which, which trigger the echoes of these patterns still echo sometimes but now when that happens I turn straight towards it let's say, go straight into it, experience it as fully as possible, savour the flavour of that, that emotion, as much as possible, uh, and it's absorbed. Um, not turning away from it, turning directly towards it, merging with it, let's say. Um, But 
<clears throat> there, there seem to be some people who are interested in this, um, but so interested in this topic. They, they, they want to wake up. They, they're drawn to this, but at the same time, they're creating obstacles, which is what the the separate self does. It, 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 it materializes problems from nothing as obstacles as barriers so all i see is awakeness liberation uh, non-dual reality and um, fabricating barriers to come between or obscure this self-recognition um, and when that when it's functioning like that in that way that's the awakening playing out. These these that are created, these barriers, just need to be seen. They just need to be seen through. Um, and I, I can point that out, but um, let's say in this person, will that be seen? Will that be um, recognised? I don't know, but all I can all I can do is point that out. If if I'm asked, if I'm asked, and people do the same thing for me, um, so for example, if someone uh, criticizes you, see what the reaction is. What is the immediate reaction? What is the immediate immediate feeling? What are the immediate thoughts? Because they'll come automatically. They'll appear. They'll just they'll just appear, and then focus on that before you focus on the content of the criticism. Because the criticism might be um, something valuable to you. It might it might have great value in it. It might be something that you can um, use in the relative sense to. To better your behaviours and your thoughts and your relation, um, but is there a mechanism there that kicks in instantly to resist that, to defend against that? Um, is that mechanism um, obstructing your progress in this? Um, does it need to be there? Is it effective? Just observing how this, um, the how these thoughts and these emotions seem to respond to the conditions of the environment and the conditions of the seeming relation to other people. All all the time, all the time. Um, so it can be something like, for example, say I, I watch. Uh, Uh, a video of someone doing a talk and they say something and I'm like I don't agree with that I don't um, that's not right I have to let them know that that's not alright um, what they said is wrong it's wrong um, and I'm annoyed by it so let's see what, what are you annoyed by that, that feeling of annoyance that feeling of defensiveness you're, you're annoyed because that person said something that you didn't want them to say um, your own perception of that says your position says I didn't want them to say that and now who says that they shouldn't say that in the first place Be because their view is wrong who says their view is wrong I do, who's feeling the, the negative emotions based on that subjective uh, position, it's me, I'm the one that's, that's suffering for it. Can I, do I have any control over what that person thinks and says? 
can I control how they perceive the world so that in the future they say something that I want them to say, that I agree with? No, that's not possible. It might seem like it's possible, but that's a complete illusion. I have no control over that person, nor um, is it appropriate for me to suggest that they should be any other way than, than what they are, or do or say any other thing than what they're, they're saying at that point in time. The radical acceptance. Because I can't... But if I go around in life trying to force other people's behaviours to conform with my expectation, I'm just going to continually be disappointed. And who suffers for, for that? It's me who suffers. It's me that uh, has to go through the emotional turbulence of not being satisfied by other people's behaviour. So this is just kind of relative like, personal development stuff, very basic um, um, very basic stuff that, that as an adult, as an adult with someone with responsibility, someone um, Uh, for myself, I, at a certain point, um, see, after becoming a, a parent or after occup uh, moving into a, a job role with responsibility where I was responsible for other people, at a certain point, I had to say to myself, I just need to kind of grow out of this. I need to kind of grow up a bit, uh, become a bit more mature and stop creating obstacles for myself because through repetition I could see that these were a hindrance um, the, the, the illusion that um, these ways of thinking and acting were effective and were making me happy um, and were necessary or appropriate was broken. But I kept doing them <laughs> because out of habit. Um, and even after that initial recognition, the initial awakening, the initial shift, again, they continued. Um, at a certain point, the, the these patterns lose their power. The, um, the reaction the reactions happen with less intensity. They, they happen less often. Um, and the emotions associated with that are um, diminished and don't last as long. Um, so for example, I was, I was working on my car the other day. I bashed up my hand, by the way. So mashed up. Um, and I was changing the, the brakes and so I took it all to bits and took the pads off and the caliper I couldn't get the caliper wound back and because I, I, I needed a different tool and I, I sat for ages trying to wind this caliper back about two hours I, I worked at it and I couldn't get it and um, times before before realisation when I when I had worked on the car before, I got so upset about <laughs> not being able to fix something. I got so frustrated and so angry um, to the point where I was nearly ready to physically lash out, um, all because I, I couldn't fix something I was working on, all bef because reality wasn't conforming to my expectations the way I wanted it to, this being a, an inanimate object not even a person. Um, but in contrast, now, there's none of that. None of that whatsoever. No story about it, no narrative of it. Contentment, enjoyment throughout the whole process. Um, learning. There's always an opportunity to learn. Even when... So say, for example, someone criticises you, you react to it. Someone acts in a way or treats you badly, uh, you react to it. 
that's your teacher, that's your um, opportunity to work on yourself, let's say, to confront these patterns, to bring these patterns up into the light and attain some clarity on them. That's your lesson. It's all about you. Not about them, all about you. So, the, these situations, these challenges in life are the, the best teachers, the, the, the most valuable lessons, the greatest opportunities to um, to wake up and to grow up and to clear out some of this dysfunction. So be grateful for that. Be grateful for that and, and have compassion for all of this. Because when, when someone acts from a position of um, that position of fear that I explained, that position of defensiveness, then there, there's suffering there. You can feel it. You can feel that they're suffering there. Have compassion for for this, this suffering. Have some understanding there. And um, show some love, because that's the most courageous thing to do is to is, is to face these things with with love, compassion, and understanding. And it is hard at first. It's that it's difficult. Um, it's challenging, but as this recognition deepens, it becomes less and less so. It becomes more and more clear, and it becomes more and more just the case. Everything's fine the way it is, no matter what. Um, that there's less and less to fear, less and less to worry about, less and less to resist, and it just becomes an effortless flow. So there will be these these thoughts. So as you're approaching this recognition, these thoughts tend to ramp up. These fear thoughts and the associated emotions will will come up like with more strength and power, with more believability, seemingly. Um, so there are some people uh, who are probably watching this video who I, I've I've talked to. And had discussions with online who are approaching awakening and have seemingly completely turned on me, completely personally attacked me um, because they associate at that point in time they associated this character with this massive surge of of fear this this uh, existential terror. And a narrative has sprung from that, and they've they've completely went at, <laughs> at me, um, uh, because that's just what the mind happened to say at this point. That's just what what was there to that function directed this energy at something that was there, yeah, or something which seemed to be there, and then straight after the the recognition. Um, it all settles down <laughs> and I uh, completely understand that, I completely get that because um, I had these same reactions, these same massive fears and the, the mind just scrambles and tries to push it somewhere else um, it doesn't want to look at it, it wants to look at something else so if there's anyone watching this channel and they they see a person sitting, this is going to sound ridiculous, right? Um, but anyone who's got this far into this video is pretty serious about awakening. Uh, anyone who's watching this video and sees and hears a separate individual person, character here, talking to you, a separate character over there, about something that is outside or separate both of us 
then that's not what I'm talking about. That's a bunch of thoughts. That's a bunch of perceptual framings. Um, really, you're anything you say, you're talking to yourself. Anything I say, you're talking to yourself. There's no separation between me and you. There's no person here. There's only awakeness. There's only... The present knowing awareness. That's all there is and that's all this channel's pointing to. That's it. And that is what we share, what we are. Having that become clear is what this channel is all about. Not me, a person, trying to communicate a point that can be understood or communicate something separate to this. That's all this is about. And these videos are awakeness, awakeness talking itself through this relative process of awakening. That's all it is. You awakeness talking to yourself, talking yourself through this and telling you that it's okay. It's all okay. That all is, all is well in the end, which is now. <laughs> anyway, that's a very long video, so I'll leave it there and I'll talk to you next time.